Some say the universe began 13.8 billion years ago and humans 200,000 years ago, meaning we only exist for one sixty-nine thousandth of all existence. But for me, that leaves too much time for the lobsters to become the dominant race. Humans in that time develop strange expectations. For instance, if records of it don't exist, then it never happened. There are records of over 1,000 animals with homosexual tendencies, which apparently takes more brain cells to understand than all of the aristocrats of Crete had. But there are also records of phallic stone art seen in pairs along with the appearance of a homosexual setup from 11,600 years ago. Ignoring Zeus, mandatory orgies, and Aphrodite, amongst many others, we have the asexual Artemis. She's a trained huntress all day and enjoyed the moon all night. Oh yeah, and then there's me, but we'll get back to that soon. There's also the transgender Roman emperor, or more accurately, empress, Elagabalus. For hundreds of years, the gays enjoyed the clergy as nuns and priests and often actively participated in homosexual tendencies. Then King Henry VIII made the Buggery Act of 1533, stating that any and all gays would be executed. Keep in mind, this was the same year he divorced Catherine of Aragon. I guess he had to assert his masculinity somehow. This law spread like the plague and with the efficiency of a glitter bomb, forcing the gays to subtlety after that. Abraham Lincoln, who we have records of being quite bisexual, and the bachelor, James Buchanan, who had a man with him who was referred to by many as Mrs. Buchanan, never married, so people thought he must have lived alone. Everyone looked past the stones falling out of the ears of Crete, the fat thumb of King Henry VIII, and the Netherlands legalizing same-sex marriage in 2001. Oh, and back to me. I'm Sappho of the island of Lesbos. I'm a poet, but truly I'm a wordsmith. A wordsmith of love towards those of my affections.